Welcome guys, this is the first episode of a new tutorial series and in this series we're going to be making a Pong game in C++ using the SDL library. I say C++ but we're really going to be sticking to C most of the time and we're rarely going to use any C++ features. And like I said, we're going to be using SDL, which is a wonderful library that basically handles creating a window and all the platform stuff for us. So it runs on Windows, Linux, Mac, iOS, Android. So it's a great library to build your game on because then you can take your game to different platforms with minimum friction. And it also has a renderer that we can use, a, a very simple 2D renderer that's very easy to use. That's what we're going to be using in this series because I don't really want to get into OpenGL and graphics programming too much because that's really going to make the tutorial much more complicated. I might do something like that in the future if you guys want to see it. So if so, please leave a comment. Now in this video, we're not going to be doing much. I'm just going to show you guys what we're going to be building. And then we're just going to set up a very simple project structure. I'm not going to get too deep into how to set stuff up with SDL and C++ because I made a video about it already on my channel. I'll link it somewhere, maybe in the description. So you can check it out. A small note, I will be using a debugger called Remedy and I'm going to be doing my coding on a text editor called Forcoder. That will be my setup. I understand that most of you guys will probably use Visual Studio or something like that. So if that's the case, just look up a tutorial on how to set up SDL with Visual Studio. I know that there's plenty out there, but if you guys want me to make one as well, just leave a comment and I'll make one. It's really not that complicated. So without further ado, let's take a look at the game. All right. So this is it. It's a Pong game, classic. It's one of the simplest games you can make. And it's a great first game to make if you're trying to get into game development with C++. And it has all the basic features, scoring, you know, collisions between the ball and the paddle player input, and that's basically it. Okay, so now let's get to creating the project. All right, let's start creating the project structure. First of all, we need to create a folder to have all of our project files in, and I'm gonna create a folder called Pong. I'm gonna be using the command line to create this stuff, but I also have it opened up here and we're going to switch back and forth. And let's go inside this folder. And here we're going to create a bunch of folders. The first one is going to be the code folder. And this folder is going to have all of our source code, simple stuff. The next one we're going to create is called data. And this will have all of our assets, things like sound effects, fonts, graphics, you know, although we're not really going to be using any sprites or anything with this project because it's just going to be shapes, simple shapes that we're going to use SDLs, shape rendering stuff. The next one is going to be the misc folder, which, which is just going to have miscellaneous stuff. So anything we don't really care about is going to go there. And the final one is going to be the build folder. And this one is going to have the executable and the other stuff that the compiler generates for us. Okay, so let's take a look at this. As you can see, we have the folders here and inside the code folder, let's create a file. Our first source code file, which is going to be sdl underscore pong dot cpp. And I'm also going to copy and paste a couple of files here from my other project. And the first one is the build script, which is called build.bat. This will compile our game, basically, simple stuff. And the, the next one is, you don't need this if you're not using Forcoder, but I am using Forcoder and this is just a simple project file for it. I'm gonna take a look at this and change the name to Pong. Again, you don't need this if you're not using Forcoder. 
but the build script, you're gonna need this. So let's take a look at it. So this actually has all the SDL stuff in it, which I'm just gonna delete momentarily. But we will get back to it and add those probably in the next video. So this is a very simple script. It has a couple of flags here set inside this compiler fl flags variable, which are no logo and dash CI. Dash CI basically generates debugger debug information, which we need. And no logo just basically, if you don't use no logo and you compile, let's say from the command line, the, the compiler just prints a bunch of text that you don't care about, like, oh, this is the Visual Studio compiler, blah, 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 blah. And no logo basically gets rid of that. So it's just a quality of life thing, to be honest. And echo off, just basically same thing. It makes it so that the script doesn't print stuff out. And then here, what we do is we check if the build folder that we have here exists or not. If it doesn't exist, we create it. And you can see that we're calling dot dot dash build. That is because we're gonna be call running this script from the data folder because that's, that's gonna be our working directory. We want to run our game inside the data folder because all of our assets will be here and we want to have easy access to, to our assets. So you'll see in, in a minute in Remedy, we're gonna set our working directory to be here. So you can think of this script being run from here. So that's why we go out one directory and we check the build folder there. So we're here, we go out and we say, is there a build folder here? If not, make one. Then we go into it by calling pushd. Pushd and popd, if you don't know what these are, you can look them up, it's, they're very easy. They basically let you go inside a directory and then get, get out of it and go back to the place you started. So basically we're going into the build folder, we're invoking the compiler, and we're basically trying to compile stlpong.cpp, which is inside the code folder that we created. Again, we need to call dot dot slash because we're inside the build folder now and the code is one outside and inside the code folder here. So yeah, inside the build folder, we're invoking the compiler, which is gonna compile the code and put all of the build stuff here and we then pop out of it and that's the end. So very simple stuff, let's save that and get out of it and let's actually, we first need to add some source code before we can call the build script. So let's go inside this stlpong.cpp, which I'm gonna do in for coder. So inside of a command line here, did I actually put the project file here? I'm actually gonna place it in the base here. And I have a command called for ad, which is just gonna uh, run the for coder editor. And from here, let's take a look at the stlpong.cpp. Again, I'm not gonna do much in this video. So I'm just gonna create a simple C file here just to check that things are working. So let's include standard IO and let's just create a main uh, function. And we'll just call printf hello world. Okay, so let's try building this with our script. So again, let's go into the data folder and let's call the build.bat script, which is inside the code folder. And that worked. And it seems like no logo command didn't work for some reason. Let's take a look at that. Oh, because I didn't use these. See, okay, this is actually good because you can see it now. This is all the stuff that got printed. We don't want that because it gets annoying after a while. So it's actually put the 
compiler flags in here. Now let's, and also we didn't get the dash ci flag, which creates the debug info. So if you look at look inside the build folder here, you can see that we have the executable, but we don't have any debug information. So let's do that again. And this time you can see it just shows us which file got compiled. And inside the build folder, we have all these extra files, which are only for the debugger basically. Okay, great. Now let's try running the app game, which is not really a game yet, but, and that's going to be inside build. And again, we, we're running it inside the data folder, which is our working directory. And it works. Great. Finally, I want to set remedy up so that we can debug our game, which is going to be very important. Okay, let's put up remedy. Let's create a new session. We need to set the command, which is the executable basically. Inside YouTube Pong build, that's going to be sdlpong.exe. For the working directory, like I said, we're going to set the data folder here. And finally, let's open up the source file, which is going to be sdlpong cpp. Okay, let's try running, which we can do with this, or we can do it from here, or we can just press F5. And as you can see, it just starts and exits immediately because there's just nothing inside the program. So let's try setting a breakpoint here. And that stops the execution. As you can see, the program is here. And if I just step over once, you can see the hello world got printed here, which means that everything is working just fine. And we can just let the program continue and end. One final thing, I actually forgot to save the remedy project, the remedy file project, whatever here. So I just control S and we're gonna place this inside the misc folder here and let's just call it Pong. That's it. Okay, great, we created a new project. In the next one, we're gonna start using SDL, set it up, initialize it. These first few videos are gonna be a bit boring because it's just setting up stuff, but hang in there, it's gonna be, it's gonna become way more fun very quick. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.